in this technical demonstration, we're going to focus on session queries. Now, to this point, we've only been using the all grouped by machine query. It's a predefined query that we can use to identify specific systems that are being audited. But in some cases, we want to be a little more specific. So we're going to create a new private query. So I'm going to simply come up here to audit sessions and I'm going to select pri new private query. So what we're going to look for here is I want to look at any audited session that has a specific event. Now in this particular instance, I'm going to focus on Unix systems first. So I want to see any time the group file has been accessed. So anytime the Unix group file or Etsy group file has been accessed, I want to know about it and I want to see that in a session. So in this case, we're only going to focus on Unix systems. We can group it by audit store if we choose to. I'm not going to worry about that. We only have one audit store. I can group it by date. Uh, this is the group and the ordering is really going to apply when you have a lot of sessions to work with. In this particular instance, I don't. So I'm going to leave these two alone, but I do need to set some criteria. So I'm going to click add. And as you can see here, I have a number of attributes to choose from. So the one I'm going to choose is Unix outputs and commands. So what I'm going to look for is anything that's associated to Etsy group. And we'll go ahead and click OK. As you can see here, it automatically populated that event because it's already been audited. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll click OK once more. And now I have a private queries option that has a Unix group file query built into it. Let's go ahead and create another one before we go back and review these. I'm going to go ahead and select private queries. I'm going to select new private query. I could have done that from the audit sessions, but since I already have the option for private queries, I'm, uh, I can go ahead and add it from there. Now, in this case, I want to see any time that the license key file has been accessed. So I'm going to name it appropriately, license key file access. This is going to apply to all systems. And again, I'm not going to worry about grouping it or ordering them, but I am going to set criteria. And from here, I'm going to select parameters of commands and applications. And again, it, this is going to contain any of the following. So I'm just simply going to type in license key. And as you can see, it is pre-populating it for me. And I'll press OK. Now, in doing so, I have these particular private queries. And what it's going to do is it's going to look at all of the event history for the audited sessions that I have. And so now if I go to Unix group file, it's going to, it's going to list that particular system and that particular session because of the fact that that particular command was used during that session, at which point I can now simply open it up and there's the event right there, so I can jump right to it, and it'll show me that someone ran that command. And I can look at all the commands prior to that and after that to see if there's anything out of the ordinary that I should be paying attention to. Let's go ahead and exit this session, and we'll go over to the license key file access. Now, what I did earlier is I actually launched Notepad and opened up the license key file, which actually resides on the Centrify management server, but I accessed it from the application server. So I went across the network to do this. So now I'll go ahead and give this a quick refresh. And now as you can see, the license key file access query resulted in one session on the app server. If I open this one up, as you can see here, there is an event for the license key. So I can actually filter based on this. So I can type in the name, and it will start to show me all of the events associated to this. So I can see at this point where the file was opened and then saved locally, which is not something I want this particular user to do. So now I can go through the process 
of counseling and educating the user on why this is a danger to our environment. Thank you.